Hello, I'm Professor Liu. I'm here with art prof teaching artist Lauren Welch. Welcome to our video. Today we are doing a Crit Clash video and we are going to be talking about Yayoi Kusama's Infinity Mirrors, which probably a lot of you have seen. They've been all over the place, tons and tons of museums across the world. If you would like to grow as an artist, we've got everything you need here at ArtProf, critiques and tutorials. All right, here's how Crit Clash works. In case you have never seen one of these before, we assign a point of view in advance. You guys will see today that Lauren is going to argue against the infinity rooms. I am going to argue for the infinity rooms. Now, what we say in this video, it does not necessarily line up with what Lauren and I believe in real life about these infinity rooms. You can see if you can guess who's acting and who's not. I've been told I have bad acting skills, but who knows? Maybe I'm improving. And at the end of the video, you guys get to decide who won the Crit Clash. Okay, let's get started with a couple images of Yayoi Kusama herself. So here are some images of her. She's very distinctive. I think she's known throughout the world for her funky hair, for oh, all of her hero. polka dots. And she's very famous for lots of different pieces. She's actually an artist who has been around for a really long time, much longer than the Infinity Rooms, which have recently become very popular. Lauren, do you want to say a little something about Kusama's earlier life as an artist before the Infinity Room phenomenon? Yeah, so she was someone, like, I feel like she doesn't look her age because of that wig that she has. I feel like she's in her, got to be close to her 80s by now. Um, she was really big in the, I believe, like the 60s and 70s. She was part of like the, the movement of, of happenings, um, did a lot of like uh, performance art type things. Also did a lot of, she made, she was very prolific. She made a lot of drawings. She would put out thousands and thousands in a year. And while she's not quite, I wouldn't necessarily call her like an Abex kind of artist. She did hang out with that crew a little bit. She lived in New York City for a while. I believe that was in the 70s. And then she moved back to Japan. And then she really got big in the way that we know her now in, I think, like the, the 90s, really, up, up through, you know, 2020. Those of you who are watching right now, thank you very much for joining our Crit Clash. Tell us in the chat if any of you have actually seen one of her Infinity Rooms in real life, because there's certainly a lot of artwork that always looks way better in person. But I will say, as somebody who has seen her work in real life, you really cannot capture the experience in the images, because I no. saw actually this exhibition, Love is Calling, and this was at the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston. And right. I ended up taking my daughter because my daughter just happens to be obsessed with polka dots. Like that's all she <laughs> wants to wear nowadays. And so we went to this show and the tickets were like, I don't know, $15 each. And I took my daughter and her friend and I am not exaggerating, literally, you wait in line for like an hour and yeah. you stand in there and there's somebody who times you. And this is not an exaggeration, you guys. You are in the installation for literally two minutes and then they oh. whisk you out and then that's it. It's you, insane how it's fast like, because my friend who told me about it, I was like, oh, she's just kidding. She probably thought it felt like two minutes. It was two minutes. Yeah, there's someone that actually sits there, a gallery assistant, with a timer that lets you in and then pulls you out again. Um, I went to go see her Infinity Room piece at David Zwerner. I believe it was in, uh, it was while I was still an undergrad student. So it was like 2014, maybe 2015. 
Um, and you know how right now when you're going to the grocery store and coronavirus allows only one person in, one person out kind of thing, and the line stretches like around the block. It's exactly like that. There was like I stood outside for yeah, at least at least an hour in the freezing cold with all of these other people. And it just was such a surreal experience. I've been to a lot of art exhibits um, and a lot of weird ones having gone to school at least part time in New York. And this was like by far one of the most surreal experiences I've ever had around an exhibition. Sterling Richards is saying in the chat, I have not seen the show, but I've heard people say they don't like that you're only allowed to be in there for such a brief time. Yep, I did not like that part of it. And they seemed very obsessed, the museum attendants, about photography rules and what we were supposed to take pictures of. I mean, I almost felt like the whole spectacle, the whole point of it seemed to be to take a photo. It wasn't really about the experience because I went to see a show at Mass Mocha and they were really specific, like no photos, period. This particular show really seemed to be about taking the photo. Uh, let's see, Sterling is saying, did you take selfies while you were in there? I know that's popular. I did, I mean, I was with my daughter, like I was gonna go there and not take one. It seems sort of silly not to, but yeah, Neil, two minutes is not really enough to experience infinity, I would say. Anyway, let's get into the crit clash now <laughs> that we have explained to all of you what the infinity rooms are. Lauren, first argument against Kusama's infinity rooms. Oh man, well, okay, so my whole deal is not with Yoyo Yukusama herself because I am a huge fan of her earlier work, but come on guys, isn't this like a huge sellout? Is this not the biggest sellout in the world? It feels like a Disney ride, like down to like the, the lines to like see this one thing. It's like the lines to see the Mona Lisa and then you go to see it and it's like, okay, I feel like I'm in this timed ride, this spectacle. And like, what am I actually here for? Why am I doing this? I just like any meeting that could have been infused in this artwork, totally taken away by the way it's been presented. Yeah, but see, here's the thing, Lauren. How many people, your average person, do you think knows Sarah Z or Kara Walker? Those are top tier artist names in the contemporary art world. But a lot of people would not be able to spot a Kara Walker or Sarah Z piece unless they were like a major museum goer. I would have to say that a lot of people who usually do not go to art museums and are not like museum patron type of people have seen Kusama. I mean, there, there's something there that this many people around the world everywhere are going to see the show. Like when I went to go see it, you could not get tickets for like a month. It was like booked solid. So yeah. come on, there's gotta be a reason. But that feels more like a Taylor Swift concert and less like going to a museum. Like museums are supposed to be this kind of like public education experience. And it really feels like the way this, first of all, the reason there are so many crowds there is the way that this has been advertised. It's been advertised like a big spectacle, like you're about to like go on this like amazing selfie experience in the, you know, in the infinity room. Like it's not talked about really like a work of art. And if they were really going to be like, oh, we want to increase museum membership, because I pretty much guarantee you like the majority of the people that went to go see this are not going to go back to that gallery to see like another exhibition because this isn't like any of the other exhibitions that they have. And there's no like like text and there's no like uh, interactive like learning experience that goes along with it. It's literally just a line for a room and then you are gone. But I feel like what you're basically saying is that just because something's popular that it's not good. Like it has to be ooh, appreciated in such a precious way. And why is it so bad that this artwork is being shared and appreciated with all these people? Like art shouldn't be such an elitist thing that like, oh, we need to like, 
I don't know, revere it in some way. Like, why can't we have fun? Like, if we're having a great time and it's really affecting all of our senses, I mean, I really have to say when I was in the infinity room, it's consuming. Like, it completely takes over your body. Not a lot of artworks do that. A lot of artworks, yeah, they enter my space for a few minutes, but then I walk away. This, this is like you are inside her head. I don't think a lot of artworks can do that successfully. I do like that you mentioned that it is a way inside of her head because I do think that it could be an immersive experience. I do think that it could be like an amazing kind of thing where you feel totally lost. Like the one thing that I loved about the Infinity Room that I saw, uh, which is kind of like the fireflies and water one, is that there was actually water on the ground so that that would cause so you like go on this little like pier and then there's this um there's water all around and the water causes that reflection so there's kind of like this uh acoustic like silence as well because there's that water there i don't really know how to describe it but you can never actually get immersed in that feeling because you only have 30 seconds in there like there's no time to actually have an actual conversation with the work. They only, they specifically allow you to have that period of time so you can take your selfie and then you can leave. Like it is all about just taking that selfie. And when it comes to that, I have this really hard time dealing with selfie work. Selfie work is meant to like only engage the viewer for like five seconds. It does not cause a deeper thinking. We've got some comments in the chat. Emily is saying, love Kusama's work. I was making a PowerPoint on women artists, found out she experienced vivid hallucinations in her childhood due to psychosis that would shape her art. And Jordan is saying, where are these located? Jordan, it depends on where it is showing. Sometimes it's an art gallery, like Lauren saw it at David Zwerner, but I saw it at the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston. And it has been at a lot of like major art museums. So th this is not like a regional show. This is like at the Horsehorn Museum in Washington, DC. So this is a major mega art show. Yovel Sullivan is saying, I feel like it's more her PR team that has total control of how her work is being presented and handled as Kusama is getting on in years. And Ripple of Aqua is saying, isn't there a value though in something that only lasts a short amount of time? Would have been great to take it all in, but isn't some of the point to be overwhelmed? Thank you very much, Ripple of Aqua. I think I'm just going to jump off of that right now. Okay. Because here's the thing, Lauren. You can't get mad at the museum people that they have to make people move on. It's a logistical thing. Like if you have a show and you say, okay, everybody hang out as long as you want, it would be mayhem. Nobody would get their opportunity to see it. And it is an experience. You, you just get it, you experience it, and then it ends. And there's something really fleeting and temporary about that that makes it more precious. Um, there are several things that they could do as both David Zwerner and Yoyu Kusama's like, team, who both have boatloads and boatloads of money to make this more accessible to viewers because that's what this is is about limiting the accessibility to the space to first create a scene because it looks really good when you have the lines around the block and second of all to create this kind of like you know it's like this this hot commodity kind of thing like it's all about making it like inflating the value of it um, by limiting people's chance to actually see it. Now, I think, and we talk about this a lot in my studio classes, you should not be losing anything by allowing a viewer to actually like spend some time with your work. In fact, that's like what most artists are really trying to get these days uh, with, say, like, mediums, especially online mediums like Instagram and like websites and Facebook and whatever, like posting artwork, like that's dropped the attention span so much. We don't actually read artwork anymore. Like what would be the harm in letting someone actually be with the artwork and just like really take it in? Like that would cause that awe to really fully immerse you and envelope you. 
Let's see. Yovel Sullivan is saying it's like a fever dream, short and mesmerizing. Exactly. I mean, you get in there and it's very disorienting. I mean, you hardly even know where to look and it almost feels like you're entering a completely different dimension. And I don't think there are a lot of artworks that can transform you that way. Now, another thing is that this installation doesn't die once you leave it. It continues to reverberate through social media because I don't know the numbers, but I think it sets some crazy record as far as contemporary artwork spreading throughout Instagram. And I think that is a really interesting concept that it lives beyond the experience itself. People sharing it, it going viral, and then it continues to reiterate itself. I mean, isn't that the premise of her work is this hallucinogenic, repetitive, mesmerizing experience? And if she's able to carry that beyond the physical space, that is truly something. I think that she could, if she was really interested in creating that kind of reverberation, there could be more effective and interesting ways of doing so that could be less confused with, say, like, you know, that banana going viral. Like, there's a certain uh, thing that is lost with... uh, Is it viralness, virility? I don't know what the word is. But, like, I feel like she could get really interested in, say, promoting this as, like, a VR experience. Or, like, uh, she's had other experiences where people have taken dots themselves and applied them to places, having it multiply that way, like, in a more... uh, you know, interactive experience with the viewer where the viewer actually gets to be a part of the artwork rather than just sitting or standing and looking at the artwork. Like this feels really show off y to me. Yeah, but I mean, isn't that sort of what all of social media is about? Like she's actually exploiting exactly what social media does so well. And I think that, again, it's like the accessibility factor is so important. And by putting it on social media, it's like she's bringing the artwork right into our spaces. And I know a lot of contemporary artists don't want to do that. They don't want to come into the public space. They want to be in that white cube gallery, in their fancy donor hall at the Met and everything. And she really has penetrated the contemporary culture in a way that a lot of artists have not. I I beg to disagree. Oh my God. She is just like the tip of the iceberg of like every horrible art fair in the world right now, all competing to have the most Instagrammable artwork. Like the entire art world has turned into this. Let's make it look really like bananas for, I keep using bananas, but really like crazy for Instagram. Like, let's get people to pose next to it and take pictures and put it up. She was not the first. She was just, like, the most notable of all those people in the way that, like, Gangnam Style or Justin Bieber has, like, the top video on YouTube. Just because it's the very top one with, like, a billion views doesn't mean that it's the best video in the world. I don't think that's the same thing, okay? Because here's the thing. That banana duct tape piece that we're mentioning, which, by the way, Lauren and I did debate that a little ways back. So you should go watch our banana duct tape crit clash because it's very spicy. (laughs) And so the thing about the banana duct tape piece is people were so silly about it. And the thing that I liked about Kusama's work was that when you enter, first of all, it's a very small group of people. Like, I think I was only in there with about six or seven people. So there's not this huge crowd. Second of all, it's not that loud. And so it's, you really do feel like you're in a private place and it did not have that circus-like feeling. Also, there were things I was surprised by, okay? When I saw the piece called Love is Calling, I saw this poster all over Boston and I was like, oh, that looks really cool. And then I get in there and there was this whole surprise that the colors were actually slowly changing. They were glowing in a different way. And so there was surprise in there that you wouldn't get beyond just the, that you wouldn't get just from the photo. And banana duct tape, uh uh-uh. I don't think that's fair to compare this to that. I don't know. That's kind of like saying, oh, you saw a picture of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disney and then you actually went on it and it didn't look the same. 
because of course it's not the same. It's like a like the photograph's never the same as like the real thing. Like okay, maybe it was a little bit more glowy, but like what do you what do you expect really? Come on, Clara. Yeah, but Lauren, you didn't step into the banana. Okay, I stepped into <laughs> I, I love is calling. Banana. Well, okay, I think that salty person is making a really good point that these types of museums aren't as fun as the pictures show. Like, the picture is, like, really cool, and then once you're there, like, it's not it's, it's not really as great. It's I mean, like, it, like, it was okay going in there, but given, like, the hour that, like, I waited to get in there, I was really let down. <laughs> Let's see, Christina Todd is saying but social media isn't art. Yeah, but who gets to make that declaration? I mean, I think you could make an argument that social media is an art form. It just depends on how you actually do it. Because I think you cannot deny the Instagram component of this. I mean, what, are we going to like crap on something just because everybody uses it? Like, oh, everybody eats carrots, therefore carrots are not to be revered or talked about in a respectful way. Like, I don't think you can dump on something just because a lot of people like it. I think it's important to bring into this conversation at this point, even though we're not critiquing it, um, her paintings that are made at the same time as some of these. Now, I really enjoy her paintings, and they are of the same kind of like ilk as this with the uh, heavy patterning, like they're very grand, they're very intense, very colorful, and it's a, an experience to be there in person. But she's doing these all by hand. You can see the hand, they feel very intimate, and you can tell that she's painting them. Um, and I really just don't get that sense with the infinity rooms. And I have instantly got that block off because I don't actually see the artist. I feel like it was made by some mystery team, which Sterling Richards is pointing out here. Can anybody speak on her process of installing these? How is she involved? You know something, Sterling? I actually tried to research that before this video. I couldn't find anything on the installation process. I mean, maybe I wasn't looking deep enough, but I'm going to guess because of the scale and complexity of these installations that somebody else does it for sure. The other thing, if you guys don't know this, she actually lives in a psychiatric hospital and Japan has been living there for a very, very long time. And these shows are all over the place. And I would guess that she's probably not traveling internationally all the time. It's probably something similar to somebody like Tara Donovan. So this is a crit clash that Eloise and I did a little ways back. And it's somewhat similar in that Tara Donovan designs these just huge, intricate installations that no one person could ever put together. But see, here's the thing, Lauren. If you say, well, all artists should have their hand in it, you're basically like writing off all of architecture and anything that takes more than a single person to make. I think architecture, first of all, those are two totally different fields. Architecture um, and architecture is like a very, very broad field. I do know many architects that actually do have their hand in things from, you know, the drawing to the product. I mean, I was just looking at like uh, Amanda Williams's uh, houses that she like paints with a team. And there's something like very personal about those. And I also think that like, um, what I, I think that Yoyo Kusama's artwork is like very specific to her hand because these used to be, uh, you know, I maybe they still are uh, about like her obsessions and needing it's like a very obsessive compulsive process these patterns and she was creating these patterns by hand in such great multitudes to obliterate this um these you know invasive feelings and thoughts that she had so i think if she's not the one making the artwork then we get into this situation like okay who is the artwork for? Is it is it personal anymore? Is it like really talking about those feelings anymore? And this is like her thing. It's not like she's just like moved on to like a different. Like, many artists go through many different stages, uh, of, make lots of different types of work. This has really been her thing throughout her career. Is this particular part of her life? Yeah, but I feel like if you think about it, don't you think that these more <coughs> intimate drawings, these are obviously 
the primordial soup of where her ideas are coming from. And I see these large scale installations that are all over the place. That seems to me like a natural evolution that her works are becoming bigger than her. And that's really something to be said that there's something very powerful artistically about making work that is beyond just the single artist. And fine, you can argue if you want that architecture doesn't count, but you can look at artists like Klaus Aldenberg, people like Christo. There, there's tons of contemporary artists who are making very large scale work like Tara Donovan, who we mentioned earlier. And so I have to say, I admire artists who can think on that scale because I can't. Like for me, if it's not in my hand, I can't do it. And somebody else who can like think that big, have that type of vision, that's amazing. So again, it's not even that I have anything against people that do like installs like that or have very grand ideas. I just think that there's like a way to execute it in a way that is more involved between like artist and viewer or has more of that intimacy link which can create a stronger effect of a piece and like less of like this whole like spectacle kind of thing that doesn't reach like a deeper level so for her work in particular there was another like co-occurring exhibition that she had that was very grand that was a room uh that was filled with spots again like totally filled with spots white room and each a uh, viewer that came in was given a dot sticker and they could put that sticker wherever they wanted. And then, so you have this amazing room full of all of these dots that feels equally like overwhelming. They're like very bright colors, all different. It feels like an infinity room, but every single person that went into that exhibit uh, got to be a part of that exhibit, got to make it what it is. I think that's like very impactful. And I just don't see that same kind of um, interaction or, um, like genuineness with the infinity rooms. Ripple of Aqua saying, I agree that artists can't always be their own makers. I prefer knowing that an artist made something, but the thing that they helped to create wouldn't be there without them either. Exactly. It's the germination that eventually grows into something bigger. Salty person is saying, but at what point would they still own the piece? I don't know if you're talking about the physical piece or you're talking about the idea because I know from a museum point of view I think that with certain contemporary artworks it gets very complicated in terms of like for example if they added this to their permanent collection how would this particular infinity room about the fireflies how would this actually exist and they have all these complicated rules about how they would actually preserve that so we'd have to research that because I don't know exactly what they have in terms of her work and Vaporistic is saying, feels like these installations would require another individual to be as enthusiastic as her. Yeah, but you know, there's something to be sad about artists who can really convince people to be a part of their vision. And not everybody can do that. It's a lot to convince other people to be on board with you. Uh, Ripple of Aqua also makes a very good point what about Warhol or any mass producing artist? And I do think that Crit Clash would be a very, it would be very good to bring Warhol on here because- We do at the end of the month. Oh, oh, I didn't even notice, I'm sorry. Um, I, you know, I think he was hugely controversial when he was creating his work and as a very, uh, like made a huge amount of impact on how we see artwork today and how mass produced artwork is looked at today. Like these Yoyu Kusama pieces could not exist without having Warhol first. Right. Well, I mean, all artwork, I would say, really is a reaction to what came before, what's being made currently. So absolutely. I mean, they're definitely influencing each other. All right, guys. It is time now in the chat to vote about who won this crit clash. And you know something? I was feeling a little wounded because Jordan sort of kicked my butt <laughs> in the Bob Ross crit clash. Now, granted, I had to argue against him. And that's like trying I'm to argue losing, against the Easter Bunny. So I felt like that was a little bit unfair, but I'm trying to redeem myself. So tell us in the crit clash. Who won? Me? I feel like it was pretty, like pretty even. You did really well. That's, 
I don't know, it gave me a lot to think about. I'm really appreciative of this. Well, and I would be curious, tell us in the comments, if you're not watching this live, if you can figure out what I truly think about the infinity <laughs> rooms, if I was acting or if this is really what I think, because you know something, <laughs> since some of you guys have been commenting about my acting skills, I have been working on it. I've been actively trying to improve. Let's see, a lot of people are saying both had good points, but I agree with Clara. Yes, Christina uh, saying Lauren won. I can't get past the two guys. minutes. Oh, you've got, you've got Lauren, oh, Lauren, oh, you've no, got no, 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 I, I don't like this, guys. Uh-uh, okay, Nanny Moon saying Clara. Lisa H is saying Ty, Ingrid says Clara. <laughs> Slepnir says Lauren. Sterling says that they liked your energy behind your argument. What about my energy? <laughs> I don't have enough energy. <laughs> I thought your energy was good. Oh my God. You guys don't even like, actually, I feel like this is good because, oh wait, I shouldn't reveal my opinion, should I? <laughs> oh, this is so hard. 10,000 crows says, think Clara won, but that maybe she was acting. You can't tell. Yes. Oh my God. I am like getting so much better at acting. Tammy says we are both great. And salty person saying Lauren definitely won. Totally not saying that so that Claire will be upset. You know, you know what, guys? To, to find the answer of who uh, who was acting and who was not acting or both of us were acting. Okay, or hang on a acting. second now, Lauren. I got to scroll up because there's so many comments that I've already lost track. So, I'm okay, saying, let me see. One, Aaron's... Oh, oh I missed Aaron and Dorinka. Aaron and oh Dorinka voted for me. Okay, hang on Durinka a second. Has one, to be for you, one two, three, four. This is for me. Uh, You're da, 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 da. These? uh that's a tie. Oh, you want to be redeemed so oh, bad. Man, you guys are making this hard. Uh Nathan's saying, for me, Clara didn't say anything about how the art itself was important. Oh, <gasps> Neil is saying I should do better. I think you guys are just writing that to get a reaction out of me. You know something? Next time I I'm, I'm gonna be all composed. I'm, I'm not gonna give you guys any guys. emotional satisfaction from watching me freak out. Oh, oh, Tammy thinks that um she can't tell, but she thinks that I was acting. Oh, fellow under says I missed a lot of this, but Lauren had good points. Crap. Okay, I gotta go back. I'm gonna now count Lauren's. I sort of <laughs> think Lauren got the most, but okay, so one, two, Three, four, oh my God. five, six, <laughs> seven. I don't like this. I, I, I think I think I uh Nine. I think I get out here. Even Ripple of Aqua is changing from you to me. Wait, Ripple of Aqua, you're such a traitor. That's a good <laughs> point. My vote changes for Lauren. You gonna get to do that? Oh my Guys, God. oh Wilson, Nathan, thank you very much. Okay. See, <laughs> I, I, I didn't I didn't, it wasn't total bust, Lauren. See, I, I had my fans. I, I, I think you did a great job, but it still goes to me this time. Thank you guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now the so question is, Lauren, these, do we tell really them what we hard. actually think? You guys tell us in the chat, or is that going to ruin all the mystique? I don't, I don't know. I think that, I think we should reveal it on our discord, which all of you guys should join. Oh, that's a good idea. So by the way, guys, if you did not know this, we have a Discord server, and we're having all kinds of nerdy art conversations on there. So if you guys would like to join us, just go down to the video description below, and you will find the invite link there. So yes, that is a good idea, Lauren. Let's do that. Uh, Kim is saying Clara was totally acting, but I still agree with her argument. Neil Lisa is saying boo hiss. Neil, I'm <laughs> saying that you destroyed me. I don't like that. I, I feel like you you guys are just voting for me to watch Clara squirm here. No, I um, okay. I'm changing my whole scheme next time. I'm I'm gonna be totally straight faced next time. I'm not gonna reveal anything. Tammy wants to find our Spotify playlist. Yeah, you know, Tammy, I'll put it in the comment later. I, they're a little bit hidden. So if you go to artprof.org and you find one of our um bio images, you usually see it on the tutorial page. So check that out. 
Anyway, guys, join us on Discord and please subscribe to our channel and join our family if you don't already. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. Thank you to all of you guys in the chat, except those of you who are traitors. Those of you guys, you're you're like, oh, you guys are gone. <laughs> Maybe oh, you can make it up to me off. later. I don't know. Stop gaming the system. If I could vote, change my vote for Clara to score more, I would. Okay, uh, <laughs> guys, I'm done. I'm so done. Anyway, thank you so much, you guys. Everybody stay safe. We will see you Bye. next time.